Welcome back to the Detect Crime Series webinar presented by Serialize. Normally, we discuss one specific aspect of how crime series work, but today we're doing something slightly different. As you may know, the Detect Project and Serialize have launched a call for new crime series projects from writers like you. So today, we'll talk about how you can create your own series concept. Any good TV series will contain three very important elements whether it's a crime series or not. Engaging characters, a fascinating world, and a conflict that cannot be resolved that easily. So let's go over these three elements one by one before we talk about how you present it all in a standard pitch paper. I asked producer Philipp Steffens, who used to be head of fiction at one of the major German TV networks, what he listens for in a pitch for a new show. I think what I was always intrigued by and uh, to that day, and it hasn't changed, is um, finding those unique characters. That characters that on the one hand you can relate to uh, or you would like to be, um, but on the other hand are so different and outstanding that, that, that that you know that it, it will draw attention. And I think that's the hardest thing right now to, to find those characters, to find those stories that stand out in those masses of, of shows that are out there. Philip says that what makes characters stand out is having an edge. For me, the edge is more or less always this, this key differentiating tool. So, oh, good tool, key differentiating uh, um, thing that, that attracts people and that stands out from this one, from this one character and, 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 and also is kind of part of his superpower. Finding kind of the new element, finding the new edge is kind of the biggest challenge right now. No, really, because I think that so much has been done, so much has been explored, that that it's really hard to create those characters that that are so exciting and so new and so fresh and so different. And it cannot just be, hey, I'm a guy from the big city who now goes back to the village. In a previous episode, we have talked about two recent trends in developing the detective character. On the one hand, the noirization of the detective, meaning the brilliant thinker who carries a psychological or physical scar or trauma. And on the other hand, the domestication of the detective, the empathic family person who has a very busy personal life. Crafting a character that feels fresh and authentic is a challenge, but one that's worth taking on, because a memorable lead character can really carry your entire show. Of course, there are also those shows that feature a criminal protagonist. We also discuss those characters in a number of our webinar episodes. I asked Philip what he believes is important in creating a criminal protagonist. Even with, with the mobsters, you know, even with those kind of people, the, the, the also these people have emotions. And I think that's very important when you create those kind of characters. Also, those people have emotions. You might disagree with those emotions, or with the execution or the, 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 or the final, the, the, their final um, action they take, but you understand their emotions. You might disagree, but you understand their emotions. That's, I think that's very important that these emotions and these values have to be understandable. And you say, yeah, my values might be different, but caring for a family is something I would agree the same way. Would I kill for that? I don't know. First and foremost, I'm not in this situation. But for my values, I would disagree with that. So that is okay. But you still, there are still touch points where you share certain, uh, certain, uh, yeah, certain, certain emotions. You know, certain emotional levels. There are other characters in your show besides your main character. Those characters should always challenge your main character in certain ways, whether it's at work or in a family or personal setting. 
Characters create conflict. Even when they pursue the same goal, characters may have conflicting motivations that can create conflict. So when you design your ensemble of regulars that will show up in every episode, think about how they will cause conflict in the world of the series. The world of the series, or arena as it's also known, denotes the place and time in which your story happens. This can be a police station and its surrounding precinct, where the detectives go about their daily work, or the housing projects, where a mafia kingpin rules. It can also describe the different stations on a road trip. Your world can be set in the here and now, or in a historical period. But whatever it is, the arena needs to be very precise and timed closely with the characters and the story you're telling. I think the, the arena in our days um, is, is, is very important um, for several... For, I think the, it, for me, arena never is something that, that stands out on its own. It's always something that stands out together with the characters or the characters you put in there. So I think it's something that 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 you know you 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 can. That's how you can. It's the easiest way to create a fish out of water. You know, you have a person who doesn't like to swim. You put him on the boat, uh, and he has to go back. So the first question to ask yourself is: In what kind of relation does my main character stand to the arena? Is this a fish out of water story in which the main character is a newcomer and unfamiliar with the geography and the customs of the place? Or, on the contrary, is your protagonist part and parcel of the neighborhood, knows all the ins and outs? I asked Klaus Zimmermann, who produced the Icelandic show Trapped, what he expects from an arena. Yeah, I, I'm looking for something that I have, going back to what I said earlier, something I haven't seen or where I, where I haven't been before. Mm -hmm. and, um, and this is also... Um, uh, when when I watch a crime show uh, or a new series and it brings me to somewhere where I haven't been before, I want to watch it. I want to see where this, you know, how does it look like there? How are the people? How is the culture? So there is there is quite a, um, um, some, it needs to be a little bit exotic maybe for us, mm -hmm. at least for us. And I think this becomes even bigger now where in recent times travel will, I think, diminish. So an arena should exert a level of fascination because it's somewhat unfamiliar to the viewer. You may want to set your show in a region that has never been shown on television before. Or you travel back in time to a period about which we don't know anything at all. Keep in mind that the world of the series also includes the customs and habits of the people inhabiting it. For instance, if you set your show inside a police station, think about the spoken and unspoken rules that exist there. How do hierarchies and command structures work? How do people of different genders or the same gender interact with each other? How do people socialize at work or outside of work? You may also want to create an entirely made-up world set in the future or a fictional utopia. But beware! Philip Steffens, who also produced the, the thriller series Weinberg, The Valley, has a word of advice to young writers. When you are in a sci-fi world, everything is possible. So you really have to, to, to define rules for your arena. Um, what, what can you do there? What can you not do there? What does affect what? And, and I think this was one of the hardest tasks we had. Obviously, always together with, always in, in, you know, it was always in direct relationship with the characters, but we always had to define what can, what can we do in this arena or slash what can the, 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 the character do in this arena and what does not work. And this was kind of... Uh, when you have all the freedom in the world, because you create a new world, sort of, it's, it's I would say, one of the hardest, one of the most fun thing to do, but also one of the hardest, because it really requires you um, putting a real map out there um, to, 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 to understand your own world. Whenever and wherever you set your show, be sure to research the place and time well, and 
Think through all the different angles of your arena. If you're writing a crime series, an important piece of the story should be the crime. Many detective shows deal with homicide investigations. That's because there are very clear stakes involved. In our culture, we generally consider murder the most pernicious kind of crime that can be committed. Taking somebody's life is irreparable and, in some people's eyes, irredeemable. But there are other kinds of crimes that are just as heinous. Drug dealing, human trafficking, robbery, extortion, financial fraud, the list goes on. The crime becomes a source of conflict when it has legal, moral and ethical repercussions. A crime that has no consequence does not make for very exciting drama. Because what really interests us is the human drama. How does the crime impact the people involved? What kind of consequences does the crime carry for your lead character, whether it's the detective investigating it or the criminal who commits the crime? How does it affect them emotionally and psychologically? As we discussed in previous episodes, each subgenre of crime series has a different way of working through the storylines that are animated by the crime. In the classic police procedural, the crime activates a debate among the regular ensemble on what it means to them. Every week, the characters are confronted with a new challenge to their views and preconceptions and are forced to argue and defend them through their words and actions. In the investigative thriller, the detective is challenged by the crime personally. Each step of the investigation lays open another layer of the character until she or he is forced to pay a personal price in solving or not solving the case. In the mobster drama, the criminal protagonist is forced to justify the crime to him or herself morally. How does this corruption of the soul affect the character? Danish producer Sven Clausen highlights how important it is to follow the characters for the entire arc of the season. The last show I produced, and definitely it was the last show I shall produce, was, uh, was a sort of crime called DNA, which you has, have seen in France and in, in Britain by now. And that was a story about two people at each end of Europe, actually, both losing a child. Is that a crime story? Not necessarily. But it, it is a story with a lot of potential for identification, losing one's child and, um, and adding sort of, the, which was the basic idea from the very beginning, but adding the crime element. So the male character was a policeman and so on and so forth, um, was rather easy. And some of the scenes we lost uh, during the editing were police scenes. They were not as necessary as the private scenes um, with a parent being policeman or not and, and a Polish girl uh, having lost her child. Um, so that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the private story, the character journey, um, which must have uh, uh, um, the arch, which must must have sort of a, a development and a climax and a sort of uh, a solution at the end of the show, being positive or negative, don't mind. Of course, there are other layers of conflict in every story. There's the personal drama between the cast of regular characters. Philip Steffen notes that these conflicts are the most memorable for viewers, even in procedural shows. Good procedurals also have story arcs that go over and then over entire seasons. Um, and these might be even the stronger elements of a show. I always, a procedural show, I think personally, I think the audience watches the show for the characters and also for the emotional uh, and private arcs of that character in a procedural show. They watch the episode for the crime show, but they watch the show for the characters and what they're going through. And at the end, when you ask the audience after one season, 10, 13 episodes, what was the best part of the show? And this is something I saw with 
with also with market research and everything, they will never tell you, oh, it was the crime case in episode three, how he handled that. At the end of the day, it's going to be part of mostly the people will say, hey, when he did this and this, or when he did this and this, and this is mostly a private thing from his private arc, it's not a crime case he solved, or rarely a crime case he solved. But it's not only the detectives who have private lives. As we discussed in our episode on mobster dramas, the family soap element is one of the most important story engines in that subgenre of shows. So when you outline a season summary, think about those long character arcs, whether you're planning a procedural or a serialized show. Pitching a new series concept usually means submitting a pitch paper to a producer or network. For the Detect Crime Series contest, we're asking for a five-page proposal that follows standard industry practice. Let's look at the various sections of such a pitch paper. The overview includes the title, the series length, meaning how many episodes of how many minutes each, the genre, a brief story synopsis, and the author's note. The whole overview should not be longer than one page. The story synopsis explains your main characters and the major dramatic conflicts. Who is your protagonist? What makes him or her special? And what's their goal? Then you should explain who or what stands in their way. Finally, what's at stake? That means what happens if your protagonist does not achieve his or her goal. The synopsis does not contain any backstory. Also, don't get into any complicated character dynamics. You can delve into both in the character descriptions below. The author's note explains why you want to tell the story now. What makes it contemporary and fresh? Why is it important to you? And what are the major themes that you want to explore? This section describes the place and time in which the story takes place. Here you can explain what makes this arena special and worth exploring. Make your descriptions colorful and specific. Reading this section, we should feel like we'd want to explore this world with you. It should not be longer than half a page. Tone explains the feeling or the atmosphere that you want to convey to your audience. How should we feel watching your show? What will it look like visually? It's useful to have a reference, a comparable TV show or feature film if no TV show comes to mind, that conveys a similar mood. Don't worry if the dramaturgy fits or not. This is about tone. The tone section is one paragraph. Here you provide brief introductions to your main characters. You start with the lead character and then continue on in order of importance. Include some backstory that informs their motivations and choices in the series. Tell us about their personality traits and values, which help bring your characters to life. Also be sure to describe any strengths and flaws. What is your character really good at and what is his or her Achilles heel? You should focus on the four to six most important characters that will carry your series. Explain their dynamics. How do they interact with each other? And how do they evolve emotionally over the course of the series? Choosing a season summary or episodic outlines depends on what kind of show you're pitching. You choose a season summary if you're writing a serialized show and episodic outlines for a procedural. The season summary provides an overview of the season's plotline along with the lead character's emotional arcs. What are the main story events that happen in your first season and how do they impact your main characters? The episodic summaries contain brief descriptions of the individual cases that show up each week and how they impact the main characters' lives. You also want to include some major character moments for their private lines if they are meant to evolve emotionally over the course of the season. You don't have to describe more than the first season in this section, even when you're planning for a recurring show with multiple seasons. The entire pitch paper should not be longer than five pages. You can include an, edit, an additional cover sheet if you like. We don't expect pictures or visuals, but you can include them if you think it helps convey the tone and purpose of the show. But they should still fit within the five page limit. Can you still submit if you don't follow this exact same structure? Yes, but I really invite you to try it out. Because each section builds on the previous, you feel you will find that this structure becomes an effective and efficient way to convey your creative ideas. 
That's all we got. Now it's up to you to create an exciting and memorable series proposal. Good luck.